I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, maybe we, we uh, give people an idea of the, some of the peptides that, um, that has been the most popular. So when you first got started, you said um, one of the earliest ones were the growth hormone promoting peptides, right? So yeah. the Samorolin was the earlier one, right? Mm -hmm. the Correct. And that's just actually a, a, just a, a fragment of your natural endogenous growth hormone releasing hormone. Um, it's just a 29 amino acid fragment of that, of that same product. And mm -hmm. so that was certainly, I would say that class, the growth hormone secreted gogs were certainly the biggest class that we originally started with. Um, and the reason being is that unlike growth hormone, they were less expensive. Um, they didn't have contraindications for prescribing off label like growth hormone does by the FDA. Um, and they generally didn't have a lot of side effects, such as you couldn't overdose them, for instance, and have any of the side effects you might have if you dose growth hormone a little bit too high. And so it really was a, a good alternative um, to be able to help with adult growth hormone deficiencies um, while still uh, avoiding maybe the more expensive and uh, certainly the, the more heavy handed product in growth hormone. Mm -hmm. And then there are newcomers that came along. Um, so in my clinic, I, I do like the combination of Ipramorlin and CJC1295. So what do you think of that combination versus Samorlin? Yeah, so I, so I think it was definitely a step in the right direction. So um, you know, here we go to a little bit of terminology um, aspect, but uh, CJC twelve ninety five um, is also goes by the name of Mod GRF um, of one twenty nine, and and uh, so basically what they did is they took that twenty nine amino acid sequence of uh, of ipamorol or sorry of uh, of samorolin, and they substituted out just uh, essentially four amino acids, and so that's all that happened is four amino acids changed, but the binding time on the pituitary. Uh, essentially uh, almost tripled. Um, and so you got a lot more secretion of growth hormone um, with really the same type of dosing. And so that was certainly a step in the right direction. Um, people call it also CJC because uh, technically it's slightly different than that mod GRF, uh, but it was developed by a company called Conjugem. And this is a company that does really one thing, which they attach a small molecule product to these peptides to give it even longer lasting um, uh, in the blood system. And so people might say CJC with DAC or the drug activity complex. And when they do, they're, they're talking about actually that, that, that little addition given by Conjugim which actually means you only have to dose it once per week, uh, a little bit more like that semaglutide. And so um, so those were certainly a step in the right direction, but I think ultimately it culminates in probably what I think is the best growth hormone secreted gog, which is the tetsamorolin. Oh, really? Okay. We do use that in the clinic, mm -hmm. um, it, it, mostly for weight loss purposes, uh, yeah. but, but you think that may be even better than epromorolin and CJC combined? Yeah, certainly. Well, I think that uh, the IGF-1 benefits are certainly larger. The average increase in IGF-1 with testimorolin is, is on average 181 points, um, which is, you know, a very large increase. And, uh, and so I think that depending on how much growth hormone stimulation you need, um, it's certainly a good avenue. But uh, the reductions in visceral adipose tissue, the uh, improvements in cognition, uh, the reduction in carotid into a media thickness, all of those are benefits which have been really heavily um, uh, proven with the tessamorolin. Mm, okay. Um, and does that one come with DAC as well? It doesn't. Um, so it, it is actually a 44 amino acid peptide. Um, and it's got a, a, a small lipid molecule at the end. Um, and uh, that gives it a really good stability um, and gives it really good potency. That's why you're seeing such you know large increases of IGF-1. Um, because when you stim stimulate that pituitary, you're producing growth hormone, creates IGF-1 in the liver, and you have really, really potent effects. So you personally, I mean, if you are going to take a growth hormone, you know, secret a gog, you would go for tesmorelin. I would. Yes. Um, yeah. I think that it is, it is certainly the, the largest effect. I might not do the full dose. Um, I don't know that, uh, you know, my IGF-1 tends to be very low anyway, um, but uh, I might do a half milligram instead of, uh, you know, one milligram dose or a two milligram dose. But, but yes, I think that it is certainly uh, one of the most potent and effective. Okay. And if somebody is buying something like Epromoral and CJC, and you would you would say go ahead and use the the one with DAC. Um, I would say without DAC, actually. Without. Um, yeah, okay. and so yeah, so that's an interesting um, um, distinction, and I'm glad you asked because 
I wouldn't have really gone into it, but um, I think that sometimes that long-term stimulation, a week of stimulation, is not always what should happen. Um, so in the case of growth hormone, we have this very uh, uh, diurnal patterns, right? So whenever we go to sleep, we see the biggest increase. And then, you know, when we wake up, it's generally much lower. With things like this CJC with, with the DAC, you get so much stimulation, you miss a little bit of that circadian rhythm generated pulse of growth hormone. And so it's a little bit less natural, I think, going back to some of the questions you were asking earlier. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that uh, generally, if I were going to do the CJC for more in combination, I would do it uh, uh, instead of the DAC, and I would do it every night before bed to mimic that natural growth hormone peak. Right. And then how important it is to have a two-day break, because we tell people to do five nights a week. Yeah, certainly. So, so that is, um, so we sort of started that convention very early with, with true mm -hmm. or uh, tailor made, uh, compounding and, and, uh, we did it because we didn't want to develop a resistance or tolerance to growth hormone secretion. Um, and doing that process, we never saw that, that actually happen. Um, but with that being said, I think that we saw that you can even do it sometimes more frequently, as long as it's not an extended duration, um, then you generally are probably not going to have problems with down regulation. And even so um, with daily injections. Yeah. And, and you know, at one point in time, we had people who were dosing it. Um, you know, up to three times per day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, once at night for, for several weeks on end. And we still saw that they were having reliable increases in growth hormone um, with the administration. I wouldn't recommend that, but but I think that uh, it's probably best practices to still have uh, to still have two days off uh, most days. And what's your philosophy on how long a person should stay on, you know, pep, let's just say the, the growth hormone sec yeah. secreted gogs? Yeah, so I think every peptide is different, but for the growth hormone secreted gogs, I uh, probably more, I'm, I'm urging a little bit more caution um, than I used to uh, whenever we were first doing this. Um, and the reason being, I think, is some of my priorities have changed a little bit um, as it relates to what outcome you're really looking to seek. Um, you know, I think with growth hormone stimulation, you're driving a proliferative growth process. Um, and, and I think that uh, that might not always be the thing that you want. Um, you know, I think that there's now another side of the coin, especially from a longevity perspective, where you might want to to sometimes have those periods, but then in other times you might want to have more restrictive periods of growth uh, where you're being more uh, conservative um, in some of those processes for better longevity. And so um, I think that, uh, you know, you could stay on them for a long time without really any negative effects. But I think, um, you know, my, my philosophy has changed, maybe doing it, uh, you know, three months on, maybe three months off or something similar to that.